Hello, come in. Hi, Brad. Hello. I'm Jill, I'm one of you, the student nurses. Hi, Brett. My name's Cody. I'm another student nurse. We're nice to see you guys. Helping to take care of you today. We are judging questions. Uh, yeah, are you able to answer some questions for me? We are. Oh, fantastic. I uh, was really wanting to know more about what's actually going on with me. Uh, the doctors keep saying I have something called spinal shock, but no one really is telling me what that means. I had a friend who was a quadriplegic who sometimes he'd turn really red in the face and he'd need to go to the emergency room right away and it was a big emergency. Is that the sort of thing that I have? So Brett, first we should talk about what spinal shock is. Um, the name itself sounds a little bit scarier than it really is. Uh, it has a lot to do with inflammation and secondary uh, injuries that we're not really able to see right now. And so uh, pretty much all that has to do with you and you're not being able to uh, show us any of your reflexes or anything like that. It just means that uh, currently you're, uh, you're feeling symptoms and we're seeing signs of this tetraplegia, this all four limb weakness and paralysis. And I just want you to know that um, this is temporary and it's important for you to understand that it's masking really what we're looking for, which is the definitive injury. And uh, until we can kind of find those reflexes and, and uh, check some other things, vital sign wise, we're not going to know exactly the extent of your injuries. So currently you're in this state of spinal shock. It doesn't mean that um, we know exactly what's wrong with you, but as soon as we are able to find that out, we'll, uh, we'll be able to narrow down the list of things that you're experiencing. So the spinal shock is basically covering up uh, what may or may not be actually happening in my body? Because, you're right, because it is masking your uh, deep tendon reflexes, that's one of the main things that we check for to try to assess, you know, the extent of your spinal cord injury. Is that like when people are hitting my knee with the, the device? That's, that's exactly it, yeah. That's so, okay, I can't feel it. Well, there you go. As long as you have a spinal shock, we're not going to see much in terms of reflexes. And you said something about a secondary injury? The secondary injury uh, is basically just what we term the inflammation that your body is naturally experiencing in, in response to the injury itself. So I might still be getting injured right now? You might still be, which is why we're keeping such a close eye on you and, and why we're going to keep testing you know, those reflexes and your other vital signs pretty, so, pretty frequently. So we just don't know the full extent of my injury until uh, my body is done masking yep, as uh, soon the as symptoms the, and we can really tell what the inflammation has caused. As soon as the spinal shock subsides, we'll be able to give you much more definitive. Oh, that's so hard not knowing. It is, but like I said, it's temporary. So we'll just keep a close eye on you while we're waiting for that to subside, okay? Okay. All right, Brett, now that you know what spinal shock is, um, now I can explain to you the difference of what your friend has. You were saying that his face turns red, and that's called autonomic dysreflexia. That's and a big word. It is a big word. And you have spinal shock. And there's some differences between them. The spinal shock, it happens initially with your injury. It's temporary. And um, the autonomic dysreflexia, it is lifelong and it comes and goes and it's often triggered like if you have a full a full bladder a full bowel and then it sets off your fight or flight um, response which is kind of that's why your friend's face turns red because it raises blood pressure and um, then in your heart actually goes like a, at a slower rate so they're kind of not quite communicating the same um, and so if I'm understanding this uh, correctly, it's so the spinal shock has to do more with that I'm kind of in a temporary state where uh, things just aren't communicating in my body really well and I can't, I can't really move at all. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that may uh, change as time goes on. Correct. Uh, but the autonomic dysreflexia, that's sort of like an ongoing thing. It is an ongoing thing. And because you're tetraplegic, you will be at risk for that doesn't okay. mean that you know you're necessarily going to have it if we are able to follow a bowel program but 
And so it means that my face will turn red because my body freaks out if uh, I need to pee. If that happens, yes. And um, then it's a medical emergency. So that, just like that with my friends, important. we have to get them to the hospital. We have to keep them up. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Brett, like Joe was saying, um, it's really important for us to maintain a very strict bowel and bladder routine because like she was saying, you have distension in the bowels or the bladder muscle for whatever reason that triggers your sympathetic nervous system to kick in. You get all these bad uh, signs and symptoms that we want to try to avoid. So that is why we're going to continue to uh, catheterize you uh, pretty regularly, probably about once every hour or two, just to make sure your bladder's not distending and setting off that reaction. We're going to want to make sure that we have you on a, a bedpan routine here so that should you need to have a bowel movement, uh, we will take care of that as soon as it becomes evident. Again, just so that we can prevent any of that uh, rebounding hypertension, bradycardia, slow heart rate, high blood pressure. Um, and so, Luckily, uh, you won't be able to feel any of that currently. Uh, we're hoping that, you know, with time, this will subside, subside and you'll be able to start feeling things again. Um, but until we can kind of pinpoint exactly what's making you feel this way and what's making these things happen, we need to make sure that we have very uh, close control over your, your bowel and your bladder. Um, so we, we just need to make sure that I'm going the way that I should so that it doesn't uh, create that urgency like when you need to go because otherwise my body might freak out. Correct, yeah. And just because of the communication signals of the uh, spinal cord, they're kind of frazzled right now. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean it makes sense because I can't really feel if I need to go or not. So. And that's a big thing, you can't really feel that urge uh, currently. And uh, so you might have a full bladder should we not, you know, be catheterizing you every hour or two. And we don't want that, because that's obviously going to lead to some problems. Well, I understand on top of it. Does that all make sense? I think so. OK. So we'll keep you posted on that, and we'll try to, again, make it as easy to follow and as comfortable for you as we can. So. Oh, well, this all sounds like so much information. Is there a chance that you have uh, like a booklet that you can give my family? Absolutely. We'll send you home with something, and we'll actually, we can bring it in. So Brett, we bought you, we brought you a uh, informational pamphlet talking about different sorts of spinal cord injuries. This would be really good for you and your family to read. I know you can't quite hold it on your own no, I can't quite move my yet. Hands. You can't move your hands quite yet. Um, so we'll just have this for you whenever you're ready or whenever your family gets here and wants to see it. Uh, it just goes over basically everything that Jill and I talked about in terms of spinal shock and the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. And uh, I think this will be a really good reference for you to uh, to look at and to discuss with your, your family once they... Well, thank you guys so much. You're going to be such amazing nurses when you finish school. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. If you have if any more questions, let us know. If there's anything else we can do, let us know. Oh, awesome, guys. Thank you. All right.